everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. I just got one of the biggest downloads that I've had in a very long time, uh, for me personally, and as this podcast always is, is I am taking y'all on, on the journey of my own personal growth, like, <laughs> put your seatbelts on, buckle up, let's go, <coughs> because we are all reflections for each other, so I know that If I help just one person by sharing this message, then my job is done. And I've already accomplished that because a big reason why I am making this podcast is that I remember (laughs) because I feel very deep in the knowingness about this one thing and it is a core to a lot of my life. So this podcast is dedicated to me (laughs) and to all of you who show up every single day doing the best you can in a world that is transforming right now. Um, So this is the big download. It is one of the most rare things in the universe to have a soul be born into this earth dimension with its density and its forgetfulness and its negative beliefs and it's choosing separation for thousands of years. <clears throat> it is so rare. It is such a gem in the timeline for someone to actually love themselves all the way. The reason why this is, there's a ha- hair on my mic. <laughs> the reason why this is, is because we live in a world where we are surrounded by disconnection and the only way that you can really love yourself all the way is that you're able to be your authentic self. Most people don't get there in their lives. They're, they don't know what it's like to be their authentic selves because they haven't felt safe or it's usually from a very young age because we've been led to believe that being our authentic selves will equal disconnection. And when you're young, you need this connection because this actually is your survival. Like this is literally like people that feed you, (laughs) you know, like the people that house you, like (coughs) when you're a baby and a kid, this is what you, you have to buy into some of these beliefs because this is the program that you, your soul was born into. But the opportunity is to release those and let go of those negative beliefs and really allow yourself to be your authentic self. And some people have, chosen to be born into families where they can be their authentic selves and that's great i'm so happy for them um but even then even when you are your authentic self and you're running around in the world and you're like i want to share this with everyone oh my god it's so amazing to be alive wow you are bumping in to many most of the population currently that is not their authentic selves they don't love themselves And so it's like you're trying to play a game with people on a level that they can't even fathom in their minds. So it's like (laughs) they're on level like one or two and you're already on like level 100 in the game of understanding yourself, relating to yourself, having the emotional, mental capacity to relate to other people, understanding where we come from, like what we're here for, our mission. Most people are just like, huh? Yeah. I got to pay my bills. Like, I don't got time for this. I'm just going to put my head down and figure it out, you know? And so what I've realized is that even myself, I have wasted a lot of my source energy playing this game of connection with others (laughs) when they can't even get to my level. And then being and then like disregarding my own needs so this is so when you love yourself it's like this little home that you built inside of yourself it's like this this little like cozy home and like say it's snowing outside you got a little fire going and this is this warm cozy place that is you and this is your love for yourself and this is you knowing yourself and being in your power with it we are humans that are wired for connection so we are here to relate to other people we're here to have moments of 
temporary forgetfulness and disconnection in order to grow. Like it's all about growing, right? But what I found is that most people leave this cozy home that is themselves and they go out and they abandon themselves. They abandon this home in themselves in order to get temporary love and connection from others. And I'm not saying that love and connection from others is always temporary, but it will always be temporary if you do not come home to yourself first. If you are running around as an inauthentic person, and the way you do that is if you give up your own needs, you <coughs> you seek connection to fill love that you need to be giving yourself. You you know, you're not able to co-regulate with other people because you're trying to get your needs met so much that you are disregarding what other people need around you and just putting your thing first. That's actually also not coming home to yourself because when you are home inside of yourself, you will be able to have capacity to host everyone around you because you will be grounded in yourself and your needs and you will understand that we are all connected. And if I hurt you, then I hurt myself. And if I love you, then I love myself even more. And I've been really feeling into this for various reasons. Um, because it's like when I'm alone, when I'm by myself, I really am in this knowingness. I'm like, I'm the baddest bitch around. Let's go. Like, I'm vibing. I'm doing my stuff. You know, like things are happening. I'm in the synchronicity. Like, and it's when I get into connection with others, I find that two things happen. One, I uncover a negative belief within myself I didn't realize. One of them that I've uncovered recently is that, like, I came into this timeline as a very sensitive star seed who was completely artistic, creative, always painting, drawing, making clothes, baking with my mom, you know, writing poetry, um, playing music, I played drums, I sang growing up. I was like this artistic creature that just viewed everything from the lens of poetry. Like I was just like everything in the world is, is fuel for me to write more beautiful poems with. And then what I found is that when you really are your authentic self and you're not able to set your boundaries, people really want to suck on this energy because they are literally plugging into your energy and they're using it to fulfill what they can't fulfill within themselves. So, which is their own connection to source, which is their own connection to themselves and the self-love. And so from a very young age, I had this happen with my family, with my community. Like I was just being sucked dry all the time. <coughs> and so I had, I built these mechanisms that when I am myself all the way and when I'm not helping other it's basically like I had this belief that I need to go around helping everyone and making sure everyone is okay it's also part of my human design before I can really allow myself to be okay and I would put my needs last which is not coming home to myself and just not honoring myself and I had a very abusive father who was very pushy with what he wanted and disregarded what anyone else wanted around him and could come up with any reason why uh, he was very charismatic in the way that he could get his point across to the point where your head would be spinning because you'd be so confused that you would just agree with him and a mother who was not able to speak up for her needs or s or hold her ground and her boundaries so I had the masculine that was pushing too much and the feminine that was not holding her ground and Ooh, that did a lot for me. So um, I found that in my, my relationships that are not on the home front, you know, like outside of my home, in my community, with my friends, I have these boundaries. I love myself. I allow myself to shine. But what I've been realizing is that when I'm in a partnership, it's almost like I dull myself down. And I thought maybe that was because I wanted to make sure that everyone around me was okay, but I'm realizing now it's because I love myself so much that I almost don't want anyone to suck on it and I just like close it off into myself. 
I just want to like be alone. I just want to like hermit away and just hang out by myself and, you know, like make arts and sing and masturbate and just like, just enjoy this really yummy energy that is me, right? And this is an opportunity for growth <laughs> because that is, so my opportunity for growth was to speak or is to, it's still ongoing, to speak my boundaries with the people that I love and if they're not honored to honor myself like be my inner masculine and make sure that my boundaries are being honored and if they're not being honored externally then shift to places where they actually are honored because otherwise I am not allowing myself to be my authentic self and this is why I wanted to share this with all of you because I feel like so many of us run around hoping that we get connection from other people and we disregard what we need for ourselves because we it's almost like this feeling of loneliness is so powerful that it overwhelms all of our senses and then all it almost puts us in survival mode where we're just like i need to feel this loneliness when if you just really would come home to yourself and realize that you are good on your own and that everything is amazing and <coughs> really build this home within yourself, build this energy up, this would attract in people who, who are vibrating at the same rate as you and who can honor your needs where it doesn't, it, it doesn't exhaust them to have space for you, where they love showing up for you and any agreements that you've made in order to feel, I'm talking about like a romantic relationships, any agreements that you've made to feel safe, they are so excited to honor them. They are just like, oh my God, yes, this is this, I'm here for this. This is the growth. This is how we show up for each other. This is how we build on this home, this foundation within ourselves. This is how we expand. So I just feel, I can feel all of you. I don't know if you realize this. And I can feel that many of you are feeling very lonely right now. And that's okay. I know it's really hard right now. We are going through it. We are going through it. We are ascending right now. It's not this, and then the aliens show up, and then someone comes and saves us. It's like, no, this is happening energetically, internally, and it's all for the good. And what we have the opportunity to do, especially as those who resonate with the idea of being a starseed, where you feel that you were called to come here for a mission. You feel like you are here for a reason. And you're looking around at all these humans like, what the fuck are you all doing? Like, <laughs> we, can, we need to clean up the earth. We need to come together. We need to stop eating animals. Like, come on. Like, what are we doing here, people? If you resonate with that, this is the moment where you really, really, really need to be your authentic self. You really need to come home to yourself. And coming home is allowing yourself to love yourself and know that you are perfect just the way you are. There is only one of you in the whole multiverse. You are unique, you are needed, you are necessary. You are welcomed, you are wanted here in the timeline right now. And the invitation is for you to really take that in. And just to be like, yeah, fuck yeah, I am this. I am badass. I am amazing. I know it and I own it and I, I'm here for all of it. And also, in order for you to shine your light and to fulfill the mission that you were meant to do here in the timeline... It's to focus this energy on yourself and really figure out who you are and what you are and what you're meant to do here. Connect with yourself. And then when you feel clear on that and you feel excited, open yourself for connection, but make sure that these people that are connecting with you are honoring your boundaries, are empowering you to be even more of yourself, are not putting you... I call it being above the line or below the line emotionally. Our emotional stability is the most important thing for us right now. So if you are hanging out with people and they are putting you above the line, like way up, they're making you so happy, you're feeling empowered, you're feeling inspired, <coughs> that's amazing. 
hang out with those people more. And it, and I'm talking about people who actually know you all the way. Not not like new people who know the shiny first layer version of you. Not people that like you're having a fling with and like you only show each other like the side that, you know, on a first date or whatever. I'm talking people who have been through it with you. I'm talking people who have seen your authentic self, seen the sides of yourself that still need to grow, the sides of yourself that are still hurting, and they're still here. They're still fighting with you. They're still putting you first. Those are the people that you need that will keep you above the line. Those are the people that you need to remember why it's important to stay alive in the timeline right now and motivate and inspire you to keep going. The people who actually get you all the way. And if you don't have any of those people in your life right now, call them in. Say, I choose to have people in my life that know me as my authentic self. I can trust them to go through it, go through all of it together. We show up for each other and they put me above the line emotionally. They inspire me to be a better person. They host me in my emotions and they love me. And they have space for me. Those are the people that you need. If you're hanging out with people, it doesn't matter if they know you or not. If you're hanging out with people and they're putting you below the line, they're not showing up for you in a way that makes you feel safe. They're crossing your boundaries. They're disregarding what you've asked for and trying to push you to do more of what you want. They're playing games with you. These people are putting you below the a line emotionally and they do not deserve to be in your life. Maybe not f- maybe this is not a they don't deserve to be in your life forever. I'm not being dramatic here. I'm saying for right now for where you are in your growth and where they are in their growth, maybe it's not a a happy playing field to play together. Because what I've realized too is that in order for people to come into this knowingness and this love, this full embodiment. There's one thing to be in the knowingness intellectually. People can be in the knowingness all day long intellectually. I find that that a lot of people are in the knowingness intellectually, especially men, because intellectually is masculine and men are very thriving in the masculine. They're more, ma- they're more, <laughs> men are very thriving words. They're into in the intellectual capacity for the most part. This is a generalization. Women, we are led primarily, traditionally, through our emotions. This is the embodiment level. And so if you are hanging out with someone and they do not make you feel safe in your body and they're pushing your limits, you need to be around people where it feels good all the way through. And they consistently honor what you need and they're showing up for what you need. And they have space to do it all with you. And they're excited to do it. These are the people that we... And if you're like, I don't know any of these people, be one of these people. Because usually the reason why you don't know any of these people yet is because you need to embody it more. And maybe shine your light more outward. And then you will find them. They will find you. It's a vibrational match. And sometimes... I've found that when people reach out to me and they say, I I can't find these people or I don't know my soul tribe, I invite them and I invite all of you, if this is something that that resonates with you, is that maybe this is a time when it's time for you to connect to yourself more and really, really love yourself. Because I had a couple, I had a good chunk of years when I was allowing myself to be my authentic self but I hadn't found my soul family yet. You know, like after I left my cult, I lived in New York City for two years on my own, like completely alone, like a 24-year-old, like, what am I doing here? And I would just go to work all day long and work on my new startup I was working on and go to the gym. That was my life. But in that moment, I really actually needed, when I look back, I needed to be alone. I needed to process a lot of stuff that was happening. And I needed to make sure that no matter what, I was going to show up for myself. Because I'm telling you, the first step is finding the people. The second step is the fact that we are not aliens. We are not perfect. We are not fully ascended yet. 
And the second step is to invite in the humanness and understand that even when you find your soul family, you're going to have stuff go on with them. <laughs> you're you're going to be using each other as reflections to grow, and that's okay, but you have to be grounded in yourself. <laughs> My voice got really weird right there. Hold on, I'm going to drink some water. <coughs> <coughs> what I found is that when people complain about not finding their soul family, what they don't realize is that once you find your soul family, the growing continues, and you have to be on the level that you can hold it. So <coughs> I met some of my closest people like two years ago here on the island. And... <coughs> we all ended up dating each other like a triad it was a woman and a man I dated and I was just so excited because I was like oh my god this is my soul family I love you I want to make love with all of you let's do this all together and they were not romantically into each other they were both romantically into me and they were not romantically into each other but I knew that we were all soul family and I was in love with both of them at the same time and so this was causing lots of emotional distress for everyone involved. There was a lot of love there. We ended up doing a Tantra retreat together and then spending a whole month like all living together. And like while everything I just said was going on, they were both in love with me individually. They loved each other as soul family, but they weren't romantically into each other. And I really fucked that up a lot. I, I was not ready for that situation. I just wanted to play and I wanted to do whatever I wanted. And I wanted, I like sat us all down, the three of us, and I was telling them what I wanted. And I did not want to hear what they wanted. I wanted to, I wanted us all to be one happy family and everyone's sleeping with everyone. Everyone's excited about it and blah, 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 blah. And I really hurt them a lot. And it caused a lot of disconnection and I still knew in my heart of hearts that this was my soul family. And they almost disconnected from me to the point where they never wanted to talk to me again because of the way I handled the situation, because I was not gentle, because I could have been more emotionally mature. I could have created more space. I could have created more time for people to catch up. I saw it. I wanted it. It felt good for me. And so I went for it. And I hurt people along the way. And so this is what I'm trying to tell you is like, you got to be gentle with yourself and with others. But the most important thing is to come home within yourself and to really, really choose yourself and give yourself this love and this energy. Because when you do, it will just naturally be reflected outward and everyone around you will understand that you are just this shiny magnetic thing and then they want to play with you. And then, th and then step two happens where you have to play in a way where everyone feels good. It feels good in everyone's body. You're honoring and respecting everyone's needs and boundaries. And then, then you will really have what you want, which is choosing yourself and having your soul family around. And for me, like my big down download was today was like, I have my soul family around and I need to choose myself more. I feel like I have been trying my best to keep up with the situations that are just like presented to me uh, and not really taking the space to check in with like, what do I want and who do I want to be with and what do I actually love and what do I choose? And, and the thing that I was really coming home to was like, oh my God, I love myself and I need to honor myself more. And I know how amazing I am. And my first relationship is the one I have with myself. I know that I am special in this timeline and amazing and beautiful and smart and all the things. Like these are things that you need to tell yourself every day, babes. I have sticky notes of this on my mirror. Like you need to love yourself unconditionally through all of it, everything you're going through. And then it will all make sense. And with that in mind, I, with this beautiful bikini top that I have on, am going to a party now with Afrobeats with all my friends. So I'm sending you all lots of love. I just got this download today. There's like a lot of stuff going on in my vortex. And I'm just like doing my best to stay in the knowingness and also honor my boundaries. 
and also feel my feelings. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on. <laughs> and I'm like really proud of how I'm handling all of this. And also really honoring that I'm in a lot of pain at the same time. And also honoring that I can turn that into pleasure when I realize that I'm the main character of my own timeline. And that is the most exciting thing of all. I love you. Bye.